What's up, everyone? Sam Shaw here, founder of Wall Street Mastermind. Really excited to be back today with another client interview for you guys. Um, today, we got Avi on with us, and uh, he's just been on an amazing, I won't say amazing, but it was a grind of a journey. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recruiting, and I'm going to let him tell you about it himself, but uh, there's there were a lot of obstacles that he had to overcome um, as a candidate to just kind of like get to where he is today, but Needless to say, we're here, which means he came out the other side successfully with an offer. And so we're excited to just kind of like walk you through how he was able to do that. So, Avi, before we dive into all that, though, can you just start by kind of introducing yourself a little bit so that people kind of get a sense of who you are? No, definitely. Yeah, thank you, Sam. So, yeah, hi, everyone. So I'm Avi. I'm currently a junior at Drexel studying econ and math. So I'm guessing like, uh, like most of you, like I go to a non-target and I'm also originally from India. So I was also an international student. So uh, I guess there were just two of the things that really were not really working for me in this entire process. But I would say in terms of my background, I really did not know what I wanted to do in the beginning. Like when I got here uh, to Drexel, I did not really have any financial business background in our family there. So it was just really hard for me to like just navigate through all these obstacles. Mm -hmm. And I would say just tried a lot of things, uh, made a lot of mistakes in the process and eventually um, came across a couple of info sessions here at Drexel and Penn's campus realized that, okay, like banking's interesting. But of course, back then I had no clue what, like sort of like what I'm getting myself into, or, like what this process would be like. So um, yeah, literally two months later, came across Wall Street Mastermind, attended a couple of those um, intro calls, talked to a few people who were already in the program and really liked it. So I guess it worked out perfectly towards the end. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So I mean, like, you know, let's go back to the beginning, right? Because I mean, like, first of all, you didn't know what you want to do when you got to Drexel. Then, like, at what point did you realize, like, actually banking is probably what I'm interested in? Was that, like, you know, freshman year, sophomore year? Uh, like nah, so, yeah, no, absolutely. So I would say my case was probably unique because I feel like these days, like, a lot of kids, like, they come out of high school and they're like, yeah, I want to do banking. For me, it wasn't until I started maybe like even halfway to my sophomore year. So January of this year, that's when I really like just started and like did a couple of stock pitch competitions with credit fees, uh, did well in those and was able to like talk to a lot of people, did a couple of networking sessions and just realized that, okay, like I really love reading about deals. Uh, I love reading about IPOs, m and &E deals. So let me just look into this. And yeah, just started talking to people um, at Drexel. Unfortunately, there were not a lot of people at my school who, who like who, were, who had broken into banking. Yeah. So yeah, just that or did, did that for a couple of months, and I guess just I don't know how I like. <laughs> yeah. Although I mean that is changing though, because I, I know you and I were talking about this the other day. Um, we've worked with like a handful of Drexel students now, which um, you may be surprised. You would think like a school like Drexel would probably wouldn't have a lot of students from there, but I think we've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got like six. We worked with six students from Drexel, and. Uh, so far, all six of you have actually gone into banking, and this is all within the last, um, within the last like two, two to three years, really. And so, yeah. I feel like you guys are definitely kind of like expanding your presence on Wall Street. Um, obviously, it's, it's never easy to get in from Drexel, but like you know, I'm looking at the list of students. Like, there's you know, guy going to Morgan Stanley, guy going to Barclays. You know, there's a girl going to, you know, William Blair, Steve Full, yep. guy going to UBS. These are like pretty good banks. And, and so yeah. I think you guys are definitely making progress on that front. But nonetheless, for sure, like definitely a non target school. You mentioned you're. I think I was the first. Yeah. I think I was the first international student from Drexel to make, make it into banking. So that's the thing, right? Is that I think to yeah. make it harder, you were an international student, which yeah. that's a lot harder because. Yeah. A lot of banks sponsor, right? And yeah. then also even the banks that do sponsor, their bar for hiring an international student is just a lot higher. Right. I mean, yeah. we'll probably get we'll probably get into this a, a little bit later, but how many times did you get to a super day and get like this close? Uh, and, oh, that's a lot of times, a lot of times, yeah. Yeah, and, and get and, and you know what I really think that was is just like the fact that you went to a non target school. If you're if you're neck and neck with someone else and you're a non-target school and someone else is a target school, like human tendency is to like play a safe and hire hire the target school kid, right? Yeah. Or like uh, if you're if you're an international student and you're neck and neck with someone who's like a U.S. citizen, 
then they're probably just going to give preference to the U.S. citizen because they don't have to sponsor their visas, right? Which is a lot of exactly, yeah. effort for the firm. And so it's like, that's mm -hmm. where those disadvantages come into play. And it's like, you have to, it's unfair, but like you essentially are being, you have to be even better than the people that you're going up against. It's not even good mm -hmm. enough to just be like, kind of like on the same level anymore, right? Is that kind of kind of what you experienced? No, totally. And just for the record, I don't think you noticed, but I was the only international student in New York program uh, from Drexel who who, been, who made it into banking, but I was also the only international kid in Drexel's history to get into banking, so. <laughs> that so, is, uh, that yeah, is. There's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in there. Yeah, that is nuts, man. Um, so, and so you realize you want to do, and related to, because related to the fact that you're an international student is that most of the big banks are the, the bigger banks are the ones that tend to sponsor, right? Yeah. Um, but like, if we think about the investment making recruiting timeline, like a lot of the big banks go really, really early, right? Like the elite boutiques, they start recruiting like probably halfway through sophomore year and then they're done probably before you finish sophomore year going into sophomore summer, most of them are done by then, right? Um, and then the bold bracket banks similarly also start probably like spring semester, sophomore year, they recruit a little mm -hmm. bit later into like probably by the end of your sophomore summer, right? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. if you're like going to junior year, you're still looking, then you're mostly looking at like these middle market banks, right? And then like beyond, like we're around what halfway through your junior year now. Beyond this point, if you're still looking, like I mean, even the middle market banks are pretty much wrapping up now, right? And like after that, you're kind of left with regional boutiques. But the problem with regional boutiques is that most of them don't sponsor, right? So yep. it's almost like mm -hmm. as an international student, you have a much tighter window of time mm -hmm. to like you have to get the offer by mm -hmm. probably right around now, which is halfway through junior year. And so the fact that you decided on investment banking in January of sophomore year, which yeah. is kind of like right when all those um, elite boutiques and, and some bulls racket banks were kicking out their processes, that was like mm -hmm. pretty late, especially for international. That was really late, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So like, what were you doing on your own then? Like for the first, like, I think, cause you didn't really join Wall Street Mastermind until like late February, right? So like yeah. For about, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for about like a month or a month plus, the, that first initial stage when you decide you want to get mm -hmm. into must making, like, what were some of the things that you were doing on your own to kind of like, you know, prepare yourself for recruiting and kind of work towards this goal? Yeah, honestly, like I was, I talked to a few people who were who already got into banking, but these were mostly summer, like incoming summer analysts. I yeah. uh, just wanted to get a sense of like how the interview experience was. But again, like most of them went to target schools back then. I had, again, like I had no idea, like what sort of what I was getting myself into. Um, and I kind of knew like, okay, like uh, what's the structure of these interviews? Like what's the structure of the process? Like the tentative, like you have to be good with technicals. You have to have a good story around you. And, but again, like it was all really high level. Did not really know like the weeds of it, or the beads of it. And yeah, just spoke with a few people at Drexel, but that's pretty much it. Like, um, to not do any interviews back then was just um, talking to a few people here at Drexel, maybe uh, some of the schools in Philly, but that, that's about it. Okay, so you did a little bit of light networking with mm -hmm. people at Drexel that were like upperclassmen or like alumni? They were alumni, but again, they were not working at Balls Bracket or bigger banks. They were working at regional boutiques. So just wanted okay. to see like what, what they liked in banking. Like, is this even a career path that's right for me? So. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so like no real prep or anything like that then. Um, no, I, not did not did not study for technical or anything. Yeah, I do remember when you first like talked to us at the time when we looked at your resume, you didn't really have any like real finance internship or even like you know any I would say any finance extracurricular activities on there, right? Yeah. So you're kind of starting from scratch. Um, I think you had maybe the month before in January just started joining like Ivy line, I think, which is like, I, I've kind of seen, yeah. them. I don't really know what they do, but like that was like kind of probably your only finance experience I would say then. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, for, for the listeners, I guess like, uh, first of all, I'm not even a finance major. 
So all my experience in the past, they were like research related or some, something related to math. Mm-hmm. So again, like it was not even relevant to like what I was uh, like, uh, like what you need in IB. Yeah. So yeah, like, um, yeah, did not really have any uh, finance or business experience, I guess, on their resume back then. Yeah. Yeah. So like the, the, the Ivy line thing, like, what was that about? Was that helpful for you? Or like, what did you guys do in that? Oh, that wasn't even an internship. That was more of like an educational program, like a cohort. So it was like a lot of students getting together. We used to have weekly sessions. They used to get speakers in so we could hear about their different career paths. And these could be people working in different kinds of industry. They could be in asset management. They could be in VC. They could be in IV too. Um, and they also had an active student management fund. So we, we, do, we did get exposure to working on that, but uh, nothing too crazy, I would say. I see. Okay. It was definitely so not an internship. Yeah. So it wasn't a real internship. It didn't, it didn't sound like it was that helpful from a preparation standpoint. Um, but okay. So it sounds like you came to us like very, very green, basically. So then like when you started with us in February of sophomore year, I guess first question is like, why did you decide to join Wall Street Mastermind? Because like yeah. a lot of people out there, you know, just try to do it on their own or whatever. Like, why didn't you just do that, for example? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is actually a funny story. So, I mean, I had a lot of reservations when I, when I came across Wall Street Mastermind because, um, I mean, it just sounded too good to be true, honestly. Like, it's like uh, someone's really like giving you that kind of a guarantee that you could actually have such a high chance of breaking into banking. And I was, I saw all these testimonials. I saw all these reviews for this program. And, and I was like, I might as well check it out. So I remember, so I actually found you on LinkedIn. You were doing a lot of social, uh, social media, uh, um, like you were promoting your, sorry, your organization a lot. So yeah. um, the program a lot. So you were actually hosting one of this pro, free hour. Um, it, was a, it was a free session for anyone. And it was, on, it was on a weekend. So workshop? I, yeah, it was a workshop. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I decided to, um, I put my name down for that. I, uh, I listened into the entire three hours. It was honestly like, I, I had a great time. Like, because I had never taken a finance class, but the way you broke down the three financial statements or like valuations and everything, yeah. it just really made a lot of sense. And I could tell that, yeah, you really like, yeah, like you do really spend a lot of time with your clients and you do really take care of them. So um, that's when I really like started to give it a thought. And yeah, I ta- after that, I talked to a few people within your program, um, two or three people, some went to Temple, a couple who went to Drexel. And they said that it was really helpful for them. Like they hadn't gotten, they hadn't even gotten into banking at that point, but they really liked what they were doing. So I guess it just really said about a lot about the program, about what your team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, after that, it was just a matter of getting the funds together and just being, getting on the grind, I guess. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, Cause look, I think you said like you had a lot of reservations, which is like completely normal. Right. There's so many, yeah. <clears throat> so many, quite frankly, so many bad programs out there online these days. And yeah. it's like people are like deathly afraid of like making a mistake or like joining a bad program and just like throwing their money away. And yeah. So I think it's like that's totally reasonable. And then also, like, let's be completely frank, like, there are people online that say all sorts of things about the Wall Street Mastermind program that are just not true, right? Like they'll say like, yeah. oh, this program's a scam, blah, blah, like. But these are people that like have never used the program before. And so they don't really know. And then like, I think from the outside looking in, they're making a lot of assumptions, right? Just like any mm-hmm. online program is probably nine out of 10 times always a scam, right? And it's just like, yeah. these guys probably aren't the exceptions. But it's like, I think what was good about you is that <clears throat> you actually did your due diligence. Like you... You came to our Definitely. Came to our free workshop. You attended it for the entire three hours. You got insight into like how we actually teach stuff. You actually like spoke to people in our program and just like mm-hmm. you did your homework to really like make sure like is this legit or not. You didn't just kind of like listen to all the noise that's online. Absolutely, yeah. Right, and I think like in this day and age, that's such that's such an important skill. Just like. <clears throat> being able to think critically for yourself and being able to like go out and look at both sides of the evidence because there's two sides mm-hmm. to different things and like yep. just kind of like analyze the situation. It's like, what do I think is actually going on? Right. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like that sounds very basic, but a lot of people lack. It is really important, yeah. Yeah, it's a, lot of people, just, job like, too. a lot of people just like believe whatever they read <laughs> first, and they're like, "Oh, okay, like this, this must be this, or this must yeah. be that." It's just like, well, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be miss out. You're gonna miss out on like potentially a really, really good opportunity. Yeah. Right. Um, you also talked about like <clears throat> getting the funds together. So, did you like pay for this on your own, or did your parents help you out with it, or? Yeah. So I also. I also did not have a strong financial background when it came to uh, like my parents' side. So it was definitely hard to get all the funds together. I remember I, uh, I did like my, I had, I had really long conversations with my dad and my mom. And um, basically like, we, I, I remember like uh, we worked with you and Alex like, to, stru to, stru to structure uh, a program for specifically for me. But yeah. I guess it was a mix. Uh, it was a combination of both. My parents definitely helped me out too. Uh, part of it was also done by myself. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But again, like it, it was, it was a big commitment for me. So um, I'm. But again, I have no regrets whatsoever. Like even if I did not get an offer this year, I still don't have any regrets because this process taught me a lot about I, not just banking, recruiting, but like just life in general. I remember you saying that at one point, uh, which actually yeah. meant a lot to me personally. I don't know. I don't know if I ever told you, but uh, I don't even remember. Like a few months ago. But like someone went online and made like a fake post about Wall Street Mastermind. Like I remember that, yeah. Claiming a bunch of stuff that didn't happen. And then like, I think you were just trying to like, kind of like cheer me up. And then you told me like, and back yeah. then you didn't have an offer yet. <laughs> and, no, and no, definitely. I still say it, bro. Like, I mean, I thought even if I did not have an offer this year for junior summer, like I'm still grateful for this program because it definitely taught me a lot. And again, like I, I keep saying this, but like I was so late to the game. I was international. I was on target. Did not have any finance background whatsoever. My, my, I mean, I mean, my parents did not know what banking is. Like, they did not know what banking was like back like seven, eight months ago. Yeah. So, um, I look that. I mean, just to finish my thought there, like that, that meant a lot to me when you told me, like, you know, even if I don't end up getting an offer, I felt like, you know, this investment that I made in this program was completely worth it. And I have no regrets because, like yeah. that. That right there told me that, hey, we're doing something right. Like if even our clients who might not get offers are still happy with their experience in the program, yeah. then, 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 you know, <clears throat> that means that we're providing a good service. Obviously, yeah. I'm much rather, I'm super happy that you did end up getting an offer because <laughs> at the end of the day, we want all of our clients to get offers. But that was just like, I don't think I ever thanked you for telling me that because to be honest, I was like, you know, pretty kind of like emotionally, I was kind of down back then. Because it's definitely a hard time. But again, like, it, I mean, it's, it's like you get both positives and negatives out of the job. So it's just like yeah. important to like take. Yeah, for sure. But also like, you know, to your point, it's like, you're not the first person where like, sometimes like you, you're not the first person who's like really wanted to do this program, but then has to like, kind of like, try really hard to like find the financial resources to be able to do that. Yeah. Right. Because like, we're not like, this is not like some cheap program, like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks or whatever. It's like, there's a lot of those Absolutely. out there, mm -hmm. but obviously they can't deliver on the type of stuff that we deliver on for that price. Right. Yeah. But like, but I think like the other thing I really want to give you props for is like, you really got resourceful about it. You had probably what was like, pretty difficult conversations with your parents because like a lot of our students have to go through that process of like going to their parents having the difficult conversations explaining to their parents yeah. why something like this is is a good investment and parents yeah. are probably even more skeptical than you are right they're yeah. like what the hell is this like are you being taken I mean, the parents first question of what is investment banking so it's just a, it, that's just a long pad after that so <laughs> <laughs> right no like a lot of other parents right. well, though, a lot of times parents don't even know what investment making is yeah a lot of times parents um they might have heard of investment making but it's just like a very vague sense and then like they're like well yeah. why does it matter if you get into investment making or accounting like isn't it the same thing and it's like completely yeah. <laughs> right um they don't understand like the the salary is way higher the exit opportunities are way better it's more prestigious like mm -hmm. all the benefits that come with pursuing this career path. And then on top of that, yeah. you're, you're, you're trying to get them to buy into some online program that could work, could not work. It's just like, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome, but you overcame all of that. And then like, of course, on our end, 
when we see someone like you who's like very determined to break in has the work ethic has the right attitude like we really really want to work with people like you because we feel like we can help you get there and it's so like we obviously do what we can to like you said like structure like a package that could work for your situation right it's like people always try to ask it's like oh well, so like how much is your program our friends like well we got we, we really try to customize it for each individual based on like their needs and right. so exactly. like, without knowing what you need help with and without knowing like you know what your situation is both like in terms of like financially and also like how much support you need and all that like it just doesn't make sense to tell you like oh this is how much we're going to charge you right but yeah glad we came to something that worked though and then like you know obviously your parents helped you out you also pitched in as well and then like now we're here right and then like obviously the investment has paid mm -hmm. off and it will pay off many many times over which is amazing um let's talk a little bit about your experience inside of wall street mastermind though so you came in right. and in Feb, end of February, right? And so it's been, and you got your offer at what, like end of November? End of November, yep. Yeah, so that was like a nine month process for you, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's been going on for the last nine months. So, like, yeah. what did you do once you came into this program? And like, what, what was that like for you? And what did you find to be the most helpful? Exactly, yeah, so I think the best part of the program was that it was so well structured. Um, like, I know, I know, like you always, so the way Wall Street Mastermind does it, they like to break the entire process into three parts. One is the technical aspect of interviews. One is the networking aspect of it, which is, of course, like really important. I would say the most important of it. And the, again, the behavioral aspect of it, which is like sort of how you bring a character up uh, when you talk to people, when you talk in interviews. So I really like the, uh, the way it was structured and it just really made a lot of sense. And even in the beginning, like I know you gave a, you gave opportunities a lot of new members to, so like chip in and be and and, and join a, a, a lot of your office hours, which I thought was a great way, a great tool to uh, sort of connect one on one with um, mentors or uh, sort of the instructors and just really get feedback like uh, in real time. So I thought that was really helpful in the entire process. Yeah, yeah, the real time feedback I think is key, right? I think yeah. There's a lot of programs out there where you have to do a lot of DIY, you know, or like read through a PDF guide on your own or watch hundreds of hours of videos on your own. And, but there's no one really like teaching you yeah. or answering your questions. And then um, I just don't find that to be like an effective way to, to learn uh, when you, yeah. especially for someone like you, who was, you're basically starting out as a beginner, right? Exactly. And it's not even just office hours. Like I feel like the way, cause we have like a Slack channel, or like we have a group chat and everything. We have a we have a separate group chat for our own team as well. So it doesn't matter what time we text you guys. Like you are, you guys are always responsive. Like you, like I've texted you at like like really oh like really late in the night, two a.m., three a.m., and like I still get a response. So it's just like having that. Cause th like I'll be honest, like this process does get lonely. Like a lot of times, like it's, it'll just be you. Like a lot of your friends will get an offer. So. Uh, it's just you and like it, it might get a little lonely in those times but it's just a matter of having that belief and you have and just knowing that you have a support system you have both your mastermind alongside you so i think that was really that was really important actually yeah yeah for sure um i guess if we get a bit more into like the nitty-gritty you know so mm -hmm. you kind of correctly broke down our program to like there's obviously like the application and networking portion which is like all about helping you get interviews Right. Then there's the uh, behavioral interview portion, which helps you with your crafting your stories and your more qualitative answers. And then there's like the technical uh, program, which teaches you everything you need to know from a technical standpoint. Those are kind of the things you need to like both get interviews and pass interviews. Right. If we talk about getting interviews. Again, coming from a non target school, being an international yeah. student, obviously, like it's going to be hard to get interviews, I would say, like. How many interviews, you probably kept track, I, I assume, but like how many interviews did you end up getting in the end, like through this process? Yeah, so honestly, like I was pretty surprised by like uh, the mid, um, I would say uh, the mid part of this year. That was when we were halfway through this program because in spite of all the, uh, the complication or, or like all the bad barriers that I had in front of me, whether it's non-target, whether it's international, whether it's no alumni in, on Wall Street, 
I was able to land a, like a lot of super days, and like these were like pretty big bands too. So, um, but should I should I name drop them? Like, if you, do you want me? To, or? Sure, go ahead. Who? Where, where, where'd you interview with? We could tell people. I don't mind. So yeah, I I definitely I did uh, I did two super days with Credit Suisse, and I still remember I did my first super day in May. Um, did another one with CS that was generalist. Did uh, one with Hooligan Loki as well. Uh, was able to get Super Day with a Super, a super Day with Goldman Sachs as well. Eventually got waylisted by them. They won the Morgan Stanley, and did my last one with Dan Tanner. Was able to get an offer. So, yeah. honestly, like in spite of all these barriers, like if you talk to a lot of people, even who, people who go to Target schools, a lot of times even they are not able to like land a lot of interviews. So I think the program definitely helped me over there, especially when it came to networking or talking to people, setting up these cold calls. Because at the end of the day, that's what. That's what allowed me to get into, uh, uh, like, get to land these interviews. Yeah. And I still have an Excel sheet. So, again, like, I had zero. Like, we had, we barely had any, any alumni on Wall Street. So, I networked with close to two, it was between 200 to 220 bankers for the past eight months. And they were all cold contacts. I knew none of them. Mm. Wow. None um, of them went to drug school either. Yeah. When you say you networked, is like, these are people you actually spoke to, like, I spoke with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's amazing, man. So, I mean, I think you said two Super Days with Chris Suisse, one with Hula and Loki, one with Goldman Sachs, one with Morgan Stanley, one with Santander. So that's like six Super Days, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of things there. Uh, and you, did you have any firms that you interviewed with that you didn't get to Super Day with, like just first rounds and then you got kind of eliminated? Yeah, so I'm in the process right now. So Cal is one of them. So I did a first round. I haven't gotten eliminated yet, but like I'm still in the process. Um, okay. But, but yeah, I would say made it to the made it to the super day at every for for every bank. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other amazing thing is you made it to every super day that you interview for, right? Mm -hmm. um, that, that, so we gotta understand something, and I, I gotta tell people this. It's like. As you were going through, and I think I told, I already told you this, but for the sake of our audience, as you were going through our program and as we were helping you prep and coaching you and working with you, and obviously we see the types of questions that you're asking in the program. We also see when you like, actually a lot of times you were answering other people's questions and like, back and all this stuff, right? And, and you, you always provide some like really thoughtful answers. Like, so I really appreciate you for doing that. But like, um, like Edgar and I, Edgar is, you know, the assistant coach, right? Edgar and I was just was like, dude, like, Avi's like super qualified. Like, he, he's got a good offer. <laughs> like, we're like, yeah, he's got a good offer. Like, he, he's good. And, and like, we did mock interviews with you. And we're just like, yeah, this guy's ready. And then so, like, I'm not surprised that, first of all, you were able to get so many interviews despite being non target, despite being international, despite. Yep. Not having much finance experience on your resume when you first no joined. no but, alumni at all yeah although we helped you we helped you beef up your resume by finding some oh, yeah. experiences right so but like with that beefing up your resume and then like the hundreds of bankers that you know so you were able to land some very, very legitimate interviews and then like like you said you got to the super day for every single one so clearly you knew what you were doing and then like with a lot of these big firms like you got how many wait how many times did you get waitlisted I got waitlisted once. That was over Goldman Sachs. But again, that was a different reason. Um, again, we all know about it. But um, I was definitely, I was really that close to getting an offer from Goldman Sachs too. Morgan yeah. Stanley didn't sponsor me. They said they would sponsor you? No, nah, they wouldn't. Oh, they wouldn't sponsor you? Yeah. Yeah, see, I mean, I think you were telling me this, but like when you interviewed with Goldman, it was like the second wave, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, given yeah. all offers in the first wave, and actually no one got hired from the second wave. Is that right? Yeah, and it was only the uh, I, I think it was mostly kids who went to non-targets, who went to go to non-targets, uh, non-target schools who got the second wave at Goldman. So yeah, a lot of firms will do that where they'll interview the target school kids first. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. they'll interview the non-target school kids, mm -hmm. and then what? Like two people from the second round or from the second wave got waitlisted, including you, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is like literally you're this close. I was that like, close, yeah. Because Goldman Sachs, I think in investment banking, each year they hire, I don't know how many they hired for 2022, but um, at least like a year or two ago, they hired um, around 500 people. So you think yeah. about it, like there's 500 spots and you're like one of two people on the wait list. Like 
that is literally just like you're right. And I think making it to the Super Day stage at Goldman Sachs is also like pretty, like not a lot of people make it to the Super Day stage at Goldman Sachs. So yeah. that's, I would say that's also pretty big uh, of an achievement if anyone does that. Yeah. So obviously, I think networking was huge for you. I mean, it's really like it's the only way to overcome all of those disadvantages that you had, right? It's like get really, really good at networking, uh, which you got. And then on the behavioral and technical side, like why do you think you were able to have so much success with your interviews? Like what, what's the – everyone's probably wondering like, well, what's the secret – for like getting to every single super day you go to and, and like, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can at least start with the technical part. So I think a lot of the banking interviews is like, they're really technical. They focus on a lot of different concepts. So again, when I stepped into this program, I had no clue whatsoever, like as to how to, how to prepare for technicals. I wasn't even preparing for technicals back then. So I had no clue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But when I stepped in, again, I hadn't taken a single finance class, had zero finance experience whatsoever. Um, and yeah, I think the program really helped me over there. And again, like, I think what, what I really liked, liked about the program is that you don't really have to know the nitty gritty of the modeling, of the financial modeling that bankers do. Because I think the most important part is knowing the basics, knowing the basics of how the three statements link or how these values, different values and methodologies work or how an um, emergent model works. If someone knows the basics, clearing these technicals is a breeze. Like, I don't think technicals was ever a problem for me like in the past eight, nine months. Like I feel like if, if I had sometimes like I used to talk to a banker, a lot of times the conversations they used to get technical for some reason and it just didn't bother me. I, like I wasn't getting phased by it. So I think yeah. the program really helped me over there. Before. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like basically it's about the way you learn the technicals inside yeah. of this program where you got to the point where you had a you had a, like a real understanding of all the concepts and you had to internalize it to the point where it just doesn't, it just doesn't phase you anymore when you get asked several questions because you yeah. already, you already understand it. Right. Um, exactly. And that's without touching any like financial modeling or all this stuff that people are trying mm -hmm. to do, which honestly, like I always tell people, like, that's putting the car before the horse. Like you're not mm -hmm. going to get asked to build financial models in these interviews. And also yeah. like people are trying to learn how to build financial models when they don't even have like the, fundamentals down like they don't even understand exactly. the concepts and then they're trying yeah. to like translate that into an excel spreadsheet it just doesn't make sense exactly yeah. and i've done coding like i've used python and r trust me like using excel doing modeling is not the hard part i think understanding the basics of finance understanding the basics of these models that's where most of our effort should go to so i think having those those, those strong foundations like they will they really help me in these in this interview process and i mean at this point like a lot of times like i did my account interview like two days ago I don't even arrive in technicals at this point. Like I just like skim, skim through them real quick. It's not like I have to like open up a book like two days before that and just like cram up all these technicals. Cause now it's just like, I know these concepts that well that I can just talk about, talk about them so easily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, I, that, that's, that is really the point you need to get to. Right. Yeah. Usually mm -hmm. the reason why people always have to cram right before interviews is like they're memorizing like answers to hundreds of questions Yeah. without really understanding it. And then like, if you don't use mm -hmm. it for a few days, you're going to forget it. So you have to go back and keep memorizing and keep memorizing and keep memorizing yeah. versus like, like you've learned how to speak the language of English. For example, you don't need to go back and keep studying. Like, how do I say this? Yeah. How do I say that? And t technical interviews, the same thing. You're learning a language. You're learning how like corporate finance works. And like, once yeah. you actually understand and speak the language fluently, you don't have to think about it anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the level that you got to get to if you really want to totally. like, crush these interviews, right? Yeah. Um, but we all know, though, that technicals alone aren't enough, right? Especially, like, as you get into these super days, like, you're going to get a mix of both technicals and behaviorals. And if you're just someone who's yep. like, really, good, really, really good at technicals, but your behaviorals are kind of, like, boring, then, like, they're not going to pick you over the other people, right? So, like, yep. the behavioral part is really what – allows you to stand out against the competition. Um, what would you say about like kind of the behavioral prep that you went through and like, how was that for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I like how you said that the behavioral is what allows us to stand out from the rest of the competition. Cause honestly, like, I feel like a lot of people, like I think everyone in this program can, is good at technicals, but, and, and, but that's not the one thing that, that differentiates or separates them out of the other interviewers. So 
that's where the behaviors really come in. And I think a lot of the bank pieces, like my Goldman Super Day was entirely behavioral. I got zero technicals. My Morgan Stanley Super Day was probably like two technicals, but the, everything else was pretty behavioral or conversational. So mm-hmm. I would say behaviorals, um, someone asked me, I would say 70%. 30%, like 70% for behavioral, 30% for technicals. So it's really important to get your stories right. And I think as soon as I got into the program, um, Wall Street Mastermind does focus a lot on behavioral. So not apart from the office hours or the one-on-one sessions, they also have a behavioral module and the makers do a, it, it, was, a, it was a booklet, not a booklet. I'm, I'm forgetting the term. It was a questionnaire, right? The, uh, the behavioral questionnaire? Yeah, yeah. It was a questionnaire that, that we have. A questionnaire. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So they really like focus on a lot, a lot of these uh, basic questions, like, okay, like what are your three different strengths or what are your weaknesses, which do sound pretty basic questions, but like, like we, a lot of times, like, like if someone asked me these questions like seven, eight months ago, I probably would have like started here or there, or, like not being, not, not being able to like provide a good thoughtful answer, but it is important to think about these questions and they do come out, come out a lot, uh, like pretty often in these interviews. So Things like weaknesses, strengths, or like why do you why do you even want to do banking, or like why do you why are you interested in this firm? Like these are really important questions and really common questions too. So I think uh, Wall Street Mastermind really helped me with it. I think every instructor they provide uh, some constructive feedback for all of our uh, answers. And uh, during the process, a lot of my answers got revised uh, as as a uh, as a bulk of my experience as I, as I gained financial financial experience as well. So um, I think the team really helped me out over there in terms of revising these answers, just making them or sort of bulking them up. Yeah. So, sort of like behaviors are definitely really, really important. I feel like it's always hard for people to envision, like, I mean, how much better can my behaviors be? You know, like how much yeah. better can these guys make my behavioral answers? Cause like most people, when they come up with their behavioral answers, they, in their mind, it's already a pretty good answer. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's why you came up with it. Right. Like, otherwise you wouldn't use that as your answer. And so like, yeah, was there like a significant difference like the before and after or like how do, can you like kind of help people understand like what what is that actually like like is, is this really that big of a yeah like- no, absolutely yeah i mean i was in those shoes myself like i think seven eight months ago like i was i was literally just saying i thought okay like i'm, I'm actually decent at these behavioral questions like I, th- I thought i was good anyways and like I think it, it just took me like barely a few days, got into this program, realized that, okay, like I could really work on these, I could improve them by a lot. It's just not like, it's just like a lot of times we don't really think through what, what happened, what happens in our lives, what happens in our day to day. And I think Sam and his team, like they really, first of all, like we, they, they really make us think about, like they uh, like think about these behavioral uh, questions on, on, a, on a deeper level and then move on to like how to answer them. So yeah, definitely. Like I was in those same shoes. How that my answers are perfect. Like these interviews, like they're probably they they're probably like my answers. And that's the hard part because a lot of times in these interviews, like someone's gonna ask us about a three strengths or three weaknesses. We're probably gonna answer that, but we don't know how the interview feels about them. So I think that's where uh, someone like Sam was actually like. I think you guys have most of you have already been on the interviewing teams at well when you were when you were working banking. So it's yeah. nice to get that perspective because you're actually talking to a banker who's providing you feedback on your behavioral answers. So I thought that was pretty helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I think the key on the behavioral side that like most people underestimate is whatever answers you come up with. Sure. Like it might be an okay answer or it might be a great answer. It might be a crappy answer. But the thing is like, yeah. usually you're not going to be the best judge of how good your answer is because yeah. you're biased. You're the one that came up with it. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times like what sounds good to the candidate actually is not what, the interviewers are looking for, right? And then so there's this disconnect, but also when the interviewers hear your answer, if they don't really like it, like it's, they'll just nod and kind of move on. They're not, it's not like a technical question yeah. where you know you messed up or it's really obvious you messed up. Like they'll just, oh, okay. And then they'll just ask you the next question, but on their notes, they're like dinging you or like, you know, you might be getting eliminated as we speak, right? And so being able to like get that feedback before you go into the interviews and then like not just feedback from anyone but you want to get feedback from someone who has seen a lot of different people answer exactly yeah you, know, you want it from someone who's like seen all the good, great answers and all the bad answers and everything in between and has a lot of data points to kind of benchmark your answers against and that way they right. can give you you know the feedback of like actually this is what the banker most likely wants to hear 
and how mm -hmm. do we take what happened to you and what they want to hear and marry the two together so that it's right. Important, right um so yeah man that's but but that's great like obviously i think you crush your behaviors you crush your technicals that's why you're able to do so well in your interviews make it to so many super days um and obviously in the end um like I said, you got super close multiple times, but you never got discouraged. You kept going. Um, and then you, can we tell people what the successful outcome was? I guess you kind of already mentioned it earlier, but uh, where are you, where are you going to be going for your uh, summer internship? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually just got my offer for summer, summer, summer analyst position two weeks ago. So I'm going to be working at Santander uh, in the New York city office. It's a general position. So uh, yeah, but like, no, really glad to have had the offer and, yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, it was really close. I would say the most important thing, I think technical behavioral networking, that's all That's all definitely important. That's all in itself a different yeah. category of things that you need to look at. But I think mindset or the attitude, that was the most important thing that I got out of this process, out of this program. Um, yeah. Just don't give up. Like, um, that's the most important. That's the best thing I could say, yeah. Yeah, no, you had a great... Um, I feel like you had a great mindset and great attitude the entire time, which is awesome. Um and obviously, huge congrats on that, like saying here, that's a great offer, especially, yeah. uh, I got to say, like, one tip that I'll give people who are um, international students is, like, you know, not every bank will sponsor, right? And also, like, some banks that do sponsor, yeah. I don't know if you found this to be true, but I feel like a lot of banks that do sponsor, they'll tell different people different things about whether they sponsor or not, depending on, uh, yeah. depending on, like, like if, you're, if, if they think you're qualified and they think they might be interested in you, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, we do sponsor. Um, and I encourage you to apply, but then like, if you're, if they don't think you're a good candidate or like they look at your resume and it's like, we're not going to sponsor this guy. Like then the, instead yeah. of saying we do sponsor, there's actually something to lie to you and say, Oh yeah, sorry, we don't sponsor. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you ever ran into that? Cause I feel like good, like international students in our program, like you guys compare notes all the time, right? It's like, does this yeah. bank sponsor? Does that bank sponsor? And like people will be hearing different things from different places. Yeah. And I actually have a good example for that. So, the Morgan Stanley uh, Super Day that I did. So Morgan Stanley, it turns out, they barely sponsor any. And I interviewed for the global capital markets position. So again, like, um, I think only one, I only saw one student on LinkedIn. And I, I'm still not sure if, 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 if even he was international or not. So when I applied, I knew what my chances were. I knew my chances were so low. But again, like, networking helped. Networking helped me in getting that interview. So I think HR trusted me and they believed that I was... Um, probably um good enough to like get this position so they get they did get they did give me a first round uh cleared all those rounds made it to the super day but of course when it gets to that point like the level we we're competing with like these are like when i was there i was competing with kids who go to target schools who are definitely not international so again like for the international listeners like it just gets really hard at that point because um yeah. like if there's me and another kid at the super day stage we've both done our super day and if he goes to a target and he does not need sponsorship and he even if i'm better better than everybody even if he's decently good enough they will give the offer to him because that's just the easiest that's just the easier option for them so yeah yeah so you said they actually they don't typically sponsor but they still give you the interview even though they, they knew you yeah were morgan interview. stanley doesn't yeah they typically don't sponsor yeah so there you go right it's like people like international students ask us a lot of times like do you have a list of banks who sponsor and i'm just like but it's really going to depend, yeah. like, you know, there's going to, like, every year it changes, like, some year, certain banks will sponsor one year, but not another year, depending on, like, market yeah. conditions, and then, like, even within a single year, like, they might tell certain people that they sponsor and tell other people that they don't, so it's just, like, the the best thing you can do as an international student is just, like, focus on the things that you can control, Exactly. Yeah. which is, like, how do you turn yourself into the best candidate possible, because if you do that, then, like, a lot of this other stuff will hopefully take care of itself, right? Like if you're yeah. a really, really great candidate, then more banks will naturally want to sponsor you, right? Exactly. And, of course, and, like, and, the, and the international background is something that's not in my hands, but the non-target background, again, I like I spoke with more than 200 bankers in this process. None of them went to Drexel. And I realized that people were ready to vouch for me. Like they definitely referred me. They, they put in a good word for me towards HR. So I think that's a part where we can control. And I was able to successfully overcome the non-target backup. Of course, the other part is something that's not in our hands. But again, like if we just try to do all these interviews, like this A's, the A's, the technicals, behaviorals, like we, 
I don't see any reason I feel like why we should not get the offer. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess last question for you before we wrap it up, because you know, I don't want to take too much of your time, but do you have like one piece of advice for maybe just other international students or other non-target school students, or maybe they're both? Someone who's like, you know, in a similar situation as you, who yeah. um, maybe is going through the recruiting process now. Like, is there one piece of advice that just maybe helped you a lot that you want to kind of pass on to people so that you can help them too? Uh, does it have to be one or could it be like? There could be multiple if you want. I only yeah. asked one because I'm not trying to be greedy, but yeah. multiple. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple things to say, actually. So I would say I only mentioned, I already mentioned one of this before, but again, like, um, just don't give up, like, I think the worst thing that we can do in any situation is just like give up on ourselves. Because Wall Street Mastermind is always, Wall Street Mastermind is always going to be there. Like they are going to provide us the tools, but if we don't have the belief. If we don't trust in ourselves, like there's, it's not going to happen. Like there's a really low chance that you you are going to be able to make it to the make it out of this. So yeah. um, I think my athletic background really helped me over there because I've been playing tennis for a while and since I was a kid. But again, like that's. I always say that to a lot of people, just don't give up, always trust your people, always have a good support system around you. Yeah. And again, the second thing I would say is having the right attitude, having the right mindset. I think that's how Walter Wall Street Mastermind uh, became really important. So, and again, like I can give an example of this networking process. I think a lot of people, they just head into this networking process thinking about, okay, like I, I, I want this person to like give me an interview, like hopefully he likes me, but I think it's really important to think of it as a conversation, as a relationship building process. And that's something which Wall Street Mastermind taught me. And, and a lot of times I would talk to these bankers, they were not, they were not in a position where they could like refer me. Like they were probably like a younger analyst or there are people who were not close to recruiting, but they were still really uh, encouraging and they really helped me in the process. And I still talk to them, even though I've gotten an offer, but like I'm, I still, I'm I still keep in touch with them. So I think it's really important. The right mindset is really important uh, when, when it comes to networking. Like think of it as relationship building. I think that's that's, that's the right way to put it. Yeah. And yeah, and I think the last piece of advice I would give is don't like don't be like me. Just like uh, definitely start early. <laughs> I started really late, so I guess it was a little a little harder for me. I had to put on a lot more hours than other people, but yeah. uh, I think if someone like would definitely recommend starting early like towards the early part of sophomore because banks these days like they really recruit really uh, they recruit really early these days so yeah. uh, that's definitely something to be to keep in mind yeah for sure yeah i mean <clears throat> starting early is always gonna just like it can only improve your outcome right like yeah so, so i always encourage people to start as early as possible we we actually looked at the statistics of our students who got offers and we broke it down by like people who started freshman year versus sophomore year versus junior year versus senior yeah. year. And then we looked at like the type of offers people were getting. Of course, like the people that the earlier they started, the more likely it is that they're going to get into, you know, an elite boutique or both back a bank. And then, like the later they start, the more likely it is that they're going to get into like say a regional boutique bank. Right. And so it's just like yeah. that timeline that we talked about earlier is real. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. you need some lead time. Um, Ideally, like to do everything, to learn everything you need, like, you know, uh, put stuff on your resume that's relevant to like networking, to behaviorals, to technicals, like you got to give it at least a good, like one or two months, you know, it's just like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. These things, right. And so um, some things even much longer than that, like you network for eight or nine months. Right. And so yeah. um, the sooner you start, the more more of that stuff you're going to be able to do and the better results are going to be right mm -hmm. um awesome man it's really really good advice so guys um hopefully this has been helpful to you guys if you are in a similar situation as avi maybe you're an international students or maybe you just go to a non-target school maybe you don't have a lot of finance experience currently maybe you're starting a little bit late whatever or maybe you're all of the above or, or some of the above it doesn't matter but like if you feel like you need that a little bit of extra help to just like push you over the top um, because you know how competitive it is. And like everything is, it, it, it's in the margins, right? Like if you were yeah. a little bit better or a little bit worse, like it would be a different outcome, right? Like yeah. uh, that's how, that's how small the margin for error is. And so like, you don't want to make silly mistakes that you, 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 you don't like that. You, you don't want to make silly mistakes that you would have made otherwise if yeah. you were 
exactly. Do it yeah. on, your, on your own, right? And that's what we're here to do is like tell you exactly what to do and how to do it the first time around so that you don't have to do a trial and error and you're not wasting opportunities. And so if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out to us and schedule a free virtual coffee chat with our team. You can do that by going to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. The street's abbreviated to ST, so it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And, uh, you know, we'll just learn more. We'll just talk to you, learn more about your situation. Um, see like what it is that you feel like you're struggling with and you need help with. What are your goals? And then like, how much time do you have left? Based on that, we can figure out like, what is the best game plan to get there, right? Um, we're also happy to connect you with like an alumni in our program. If you want to talk to them and do what Avi did, which is like do your own due diligence and figure out like if this is the right fit for you. And if it is great, happy to help you. Um, <clears throat> you know, we even launch a new thing now where we have like a money back guarantee, you know, for our program. Um, obviously it has to be a good fit or we're not going to just invite every single person into that, but like have a money back guarantee. That's how confident we are in our program that it works. Right. And so really, literally I have nothing to lose. So reach out, schedule a call with us. And uh, we look forward to talking to you. But in the meantime, Avi, thank you so much again for coming on here and sharing your story. Really, really helpful. Uh, I'm sure it'll, you know, motivate and inspire some other people who are maybe in a similar boat as you. And uh, you know, I just look forward to seeing, you know, all the success that you're going to have this summer and even beyond like whatever happens for full time and even banking, or I don't know if you end up on a buy side or something else Like you know, you're always going to be part of the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, thanks i really appreciate it like thanks thanks for having me though yeah for sure absolutely man um it's a pleasure working with you and uh, i'm sure we'll continue to be in touch and stuff so guys that'll be it for today thank you guys for tuning in uh and uh, we'll be hey if you like this video click the like button and hit subscribe to get more content like this